Coming up on today's show, Elon Musk calls delays in Model 3 production a six to nine month time shift for Model 3 reservation holders, tells them that they will get their cars, and says that Tesla is rapidly making its way out of production hell. Rumors fly around suggesting Tesla will start producing the Model Y electric car in 2019, and Daimler confirms that in just three years' time, it will stop making internal combustion engine smart cars altogether. These stories and more coming next. Happy Friday, folks. Yes, another week has passed by and I've got another batch of stories covering everything from the US EPA through to a couple of new cool three-wheelers. So let's get started with the first of several Tesla stories in today's show. Elon Musk promising Model 3 customers that they will definitely get their cars and adding that Model 3 production delays amount to a six to nine month time shift in wait times for the luxury car. Musk made the comments during a series of exclusive interviews aired this week on CBS in the US, in which he added that he believes Tesla is rapidly making its way out of production hell. Asked by CBS co-host Gail King if Model 3 customers were cancelling their reservations, Musk noted that some had, but usually because they needed a car there and then, and Tesla couldn't provide one. He also reiterated the fact that he was sleeping at the Fremont factory, something which means he's always on hand to help solve problems as they occur. Here's hoping that it works for Model 3 production, just like it did with Model X production, and if the Model 3 I recently rode in is anything to go by, build quality of recently made cars is certainly better than early Model 3s were. Last week, I told you the news that BMW was most likely not going to continue producing the i3 and i8 into second generation models. And the reason? BMW was supposedly more interested in bringing all electric models to its mainstream brand. Well, this week we've got a slightly different rumor from Motor.es, which claims that BMW is using some of the $8.6 billion it recently pledged to electric vehicle development to make a new super mini called the i1. Smaller than the next generation 1 series BMW, this model would supposedly be based on the all-electric Mini Cooper Electric that the brand will launch in 2019. While BMW isn't commenting just yet, it's worth noting that it did claim the i1 badge late last year, along with the iX1 through to iX9 names. And as with any rumor, when we've got more info on it, I'll let you know. With production of its Model 3 ramping up and plenty of Model S cars coming to the end of their original lease program, Tesla has quietly announced a significant change to its certified pre-owned vehicle program. Previously, Tesla would take part exchanged or end of lease cars, carry out an extensive inspection and service, then fix any cosmetic or mechanical issues before selling them on to customers with a four-year 50,000 mile warranty or two-year 100,000 maximum odometer limited warranty, depending on vehicle age. But now it's announced that it will no longer be refurbishing pre-owned cars. Instead, it will give them a 70-point mechanical inspection and clean the vehicle up, telling owners that if they'd like any additional work not covered under warranty, it will arrange service after delivery to carry those things out at added cost to the owner. It won't impact everyone, but for those who had wondered about changing their Model 3 reservation for a pre-owned Model S or X, it could change their decision-making process. Over the past few years, we've seen plenty of startup companies wanting to match and beat Tesla in the electric vehicle marketplace. Many of them have been Chinese, but this week, Chinese firm Xiaoping, which is already backed by the Alibaba Group and Foxconn Technology Group, yes, the company that makes iPhones and other tech, announced it plans to begin pre-sales of its first model, the G3 electric crossover, by the end of this month. At the same time, the company says it's on track to raise a total of more than 1.6 billion US dollars in investment this year in order to reach production volumes of tens of thousands of cars in just 12 months. Leveraging Alibaba's software prowess, Xiaoping's vehicles have some pretty impressive mapping and cloud-based technology as standard, showing that the company really has Tesla in its sights. With any luck, I'll be at the Beijing Auto Show next week, so maybe I'll be able to bring you a little more information very soon. While Chinese firms are going after luxury electric vehicles, a new high-tech vehicle launched in India this week. But rather than copy a Western automaker, the Strom Motors R3 is a three-wheeled EV powered by a 13 kilowatt electric motor that its maker hopes to bring to market for just 300,000 rupees, or four and a half thousand US dollars. But don't think this is a toy. Offered with the choice of two different battery packs that will offer either 80 or 120 kilometers of range, that's 50 or 75 miles, 
The R3 won't be particularly fast, but with seating options for either two or three passengers and an onboard infotainment system that includes wireless 3G and Wi-Fi connectivity, smartphone app and more, it's a vehicle that's meant to bring affordable electric travel to the market at Tata Nano prices. If it succeeds in doing so, that's quite the achievement. Mercedes-Benz, just like any other mainstream automaker, is in something of a massive investment cycle right now, pledging more than 1.8 billion US dollars in developing a range of new electric vehicles under its EQ sub-brand. So far, we know about the EQA and EQC, but this week Mercedes-Benz confirmed that it's working on an all-electric S-Class sized vehicle called the EQS. We don't have any pictures of it yet, of course. This is the S-Class plug-in hybrid. But with the S-Class known for being one of the cars that cross shops against the Tesla Model S, an all-electric S-Class variant could be very interesting in the market indeed, especially if it makes use of next-generation 350 kilowatt CCS quick charging technology favoured by all the major German automakers, including Benz. Watch this space. Tesla might be running at full throttle to get itself out of production hell with Model 3, but it's also quietly working to bring its all-electric Model Y to market. At least, that's according to recent rumours from Reuters, which suggest Tesla is aiming to bring the Model Y SUV to market in 2019. Tesla hasn't responded to requests to confirm or deny this rumour, but given that 2019 is the year that Tesla aims to bring its all-electric semi to market, and its second-generation Roadster soon after that, the rumour, if true, would suggest Tesla is just going to keep ramping up its production and plans with no time for anyone at the company to catch a breath in between. It's official. After hints were dropped that Matthias Muller would be stepping down as his role as CEO of Volkswagen, the company announced on Thursday that Herbert Diaz, Volkswagen brand's chief, would be replacing him at the top of the company. The move is supposedly part of a massive shift at the German automaker away from the Dieselgate debacle of three years ago and onto a future dominated by all-electric autonomous vehicles. And, as if to prove a point, Volkswagen also announced this week that it's chosen its Braunschweig factory in Germany as the place where it will develop and produce battery systems for its new range of NEB platform-derived electric cars. That will not only include Volkswagen brand vehicles, but models made by sister brands like Audi and Porsche too. With Volkswagen still keen to set itself up as a leader in electric mobility, it is good to see some movement, but as I'm sure you've heard me say plenty of times before, production vehicles aren't any good until they're actually in production. So Volkswagen, hurry up. Back in the middle of last year, Daimler announced that it was going to cease selling petrol and diesel-powered smart cars in North America, turning the smart brand into an electric-only badge. Well, now it's announced the same will happen globally, with the last internal combustion engine smart car due to be made sometime before 2020. Given that Daimler recently unveiled EQ-badged smart cars at the Geneva Motor Show, it's hardly a surprise. But it is nice to see the tiny smart car family become what it should have been from the start an all-electric brand. As investigations continue into the tragic Model X autopilot fatality that occurred in California a few weeks ago, things aren't particularly civil between all parties involved. Firstly, the family of Walter Huang, the deceased Model X owner, have hired a lawyer and are preparing to sue Tesla over the accident. Tesla, meanwhile, is hitting back, issuing a statement stating, and I'm paraphrasing, that the only way the accident could have happened was if Mr. Huang was not paying attention to the road ahead. If that wasn't enough, Tesla appears to no longer be part of the official investigation into the accident, after the NTSB and Tesla failed to come to an agreement over the release of information surrounding the accident. Tesla says it withdrew from the investigation in order to release information about autopilot to the public, but the NTSB, in an official statement, said that it had removed Tesla from the investigation because it violated the party agreement by releasing investigative information before it was vetted and confirmed by the NTSB, something that it says could lead to speculation and incorrect assumptions about the crash, which do a disservice to the investigative process and the travelling public. In last week's show, I covered the news that the US EPA had officially rejected corporate average fuel economy targets from the previous administration and looked to be going after California's long-standing special waiver that allowed it to set tougher emission standards and fuel economy targets than the rest of the US. 
This week, however, Mary Nichols, chair of the California Air Resource Board, said that she was hopeful reason could prevail, expressing a willingness to work with the EPA and automakers to make adjustments to California regulations that won't affect the state's overall emissions reduction goals. It's not clear what those tweaks would be, but of course, as soon as I have more information, I'll be sharing it here. Sticking with the EPA for the next story, back at the start of the current administration, the US government agency ceased trying to track the nation's progression to clean energy use and electric vehicle adoption. But thankfully, the National Resources Defense Council has just stepped into the breach, announcing a new tool to track the reduction in cost of producing electricity using renewable methods, as well as tracking the increase in solar and wind usage across the United States. It also tracks electric vehicle adoption, electric vehicle battery use for energy storage, and the adoption of LED light bulbs. What's more, the information is available for free on its website at nrdc.org forward slash revolution dash now. Don't worry, I'll link to it in the show notes. After very clearly stating it wouldn't be investing in electric vehicle charging infrastructure as some of its competitors were, General Motors surprised us all this week by announcing a new massive investment into rapid DC quick charging alongside EV charging company EVgo. But while the investment will see a growth in electric vehicle charging stations in seven cities across the US, you won't be able to access the charging stations. Why? Because they will be reserved exclusively for use by Maven gig drivers who have chosen to drive a Chevrolet Bolt EV. If you're not familiar with that program, it's a special lease program offered by GM to those who wish to use their cars for ride sharing or ad hoc delivery services. But while it's great to see more EV charging, this is extremely frustrating for those of us who would like to make use of these new charging units. You see, despite those units being on the EVgo network, only Maven gig drivers will be able to activate a charging session. And that, frankly, GM sucks. We've already covered one three-wheeler in the show in the form of that practical Indian market Strom R3, but now we're going to go somewhere different in the sporty, iconic T-Rex three-wheeled trike. If you're into sporty, quirky vehicles, I'm sure you know about the T-Rex already. But this week, Campania Motors announced it would be unveiling an all-electric prototype version of the T-Rex at the Montreal Electric Vehicle Show. What's more, it's worked with zero motorcycles to ensure the trike has the best battery pack and powertrain it possibly can. I can't wait to have a look at it, but as I won't be going to Montreal, I guess I'll have to. And finally, slot car EVs. I'm sure at some point someone, maybe you, has pondered the question as to why electric cars don't draw power from the road in the same way that Scalectric's cars do. Indeed, a couple of years ago, Renault even did a faux publicity stunt involving two Renault Zoe EVs supposedly racing around central London on a specially constructed slot car racetrack. Sadly, that wasn't real, but it turns out that fact is sometimes stranger than fiction. Behold the world's first electrified road, which opened just outside of Stockholm, Sweden this week. Installed by E-Road Orlando, the idea is pretty simple. Two arms underneath an electric car connect to the track and recharge at key points during their journey. The tracks, insulated at the surface, are said to be super durable and safe. They've even been tested in snow and can provide power to both electric cars and trucks. And at a cost far cheaper than either traditional tram tracks or inductive charging systems, what's not to like? Oh, and if you're wondering, the little arms underneath your car will retract if you change lanes or go around a corner. Just in case you were wondering, I was. And on that note, I'm going to bid you adieu for the week. If you're a Patreon supporter or you follow my personal Twitter, you probably know that I'm supposed to be going to Beijing next week to cover the auto show. So it's unlikely you'll see 10 next week. As I'm still waiting for that visa though, well, you never know. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and don't forget to check our second channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. And if you want to help support the show, you'll find links in the description telling you what to do. Thanks again for watching, see you soon, and as always, keep evolving.